All right, so this is the fourth game in my U.S. Go Congress series. I hope you've been and watching them all and enjoying the games and me uh, me reviewing my own my own play. Uh, again, I did play these, you know, about two weeks ago now for the most part, so they're still like sort of fresh in memory. But enough time has passed where I feel like I can I can be a little more objective. Uh, this was I think this was day five of the U.S. Open. I played a player named uh, Chen Junjing from China, and uh, he spoke. I actually maybe maybe he was living in the U.S. I mean, he spoke a little bit of English, but it wasn't it wasn't that much. I was actually surprised with how many Chinese players there were there this year. There was a lot of Chinese players, uh, which is great. But man, the Chinese players are also <laughs> tough players. Uh, in this game, I was black, and uh, I also I also showed this game uh, at least the uh, you know the first fifty moves or so to uh, Ming Zhu Jiang, who's a very famous. Um, also, he's a Chinese pro who lives in the United States, but he's also a very famous Go teacher and has taught a lot of our uh, of our top, well, now American players, especially. He, he teaches a lot of kids, is what I'm trying to say, who grew up to become very, very strong Go players. So um, he also has a has a sort of a a very well-known voice. As far as like like when you walk around the U.S. Go Congress and you hear people or you, you walk by rooms where there are teachers giving workshops or lessons or review sessions... Uh, I think there's always two voices that that are instantly recognizable throughout the U.S. Go Congress, and the first of which is Go Zhuang, and Go Go Zhuang kind of talks like this. I can't do it. She's a uh, <laughs> she just has this very nasal, shrill voice that I think is really effective at teaching. I love her voice, but it just pierces through everything. Um, she she's a uh, the I think it's the Internet Go School Go School dot com. Um, you can go see her her lectures if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, and she's actually got quite a, a huge online Go program now with a lot of resources um, that are that are becoming really quite hip. So if you are looking to like study Go online with like a real professional teacher, um, or at least a, at least a system or a course, like you want to take like a Go class online, um, check out Guo Zhuang's uh, Internet Go School. Uh, really quite fantastic. And actually, one of the prizes they were giving away for a lot of the tournaments was um, you know memberships into the Go School and that sort of thing, which I thought was cool. But anyway, her voice is quite recognizable, but Ming Zhu's voice is also quite recognizable uh, because it's got this very uh, low bellicose baritone. Oh, I do, Joseki. This very <laughs> big fullness, and so it intimidates a lot of players. A lot of players don't like to go to his uh, his review sessions because they feel like he's uh, bullying them around, and maybe his go style is a little bit of a bully too. Anyway, Chen approaches directly. I played a uh, four three, similar to the last game I showed. Uh, it worked well the previous game, so why not? The uh, previous game I was black, I should say. Um, so why not play it again? Uh, this time I just decided to respond directly. I could take the open corner, and uh, I think that'd be fine. But the pro the problem, I mean, not a problem, but but right now White White feels under pressure, right? Because White can't really play this Joseki. Um, because if it just goes like this, now where does White put this this stone? If White puts it here, this is not useful. Um, and if white, you know, plays this one, whoops, no, ah, uh, you know, this, this feels kind of strange as well, you know, because now black can play over here, and if you approach, I don't know, there's, there's, I haven't quite thought about the spacing enough, but it, but the question is, white white just has a really hard time knowing where to where to extend to because this corner isn't open. You don't know if you need to be defensive, or you don't you don't know if you should be optimistic and try to build things. But you know, taking the open corner, perfectly fine. In the game, though, whoops, white uh, plays the avalanche again just to avoid that whole problem, and white does have the ladder, so I didn't play the small avalanche variation under the assumption that white would play the ladder variation. And again, since there's no other stones around here, uh, this would actually be a success for white. Um, white can't play this if black has the ladder. Uh, because... Uh, no, that's not the move. Why can't white play this? Oh, because this move. Yeah, normally um, white would need to cut in response to this. But if white does... Instantaneous ladder. So if you have the ladder, you can play it. But otherwise, uh, when black plays here, um, now white can cut 
and it's very, very difficult to handle this is black. Very difficult. Anyway, I did not want that to happen because he had the ladder and again there was no helping stones. So I played the really, really super, super duper simple variation. And white continues, and I continue, and white does not complete the Joseki. So right now, this is my first huge mistake of the game, I should just play here. Like, no thinking, no problem, just go there. It's great. Uh, alternatively, I could also play something more severe, like even this I think would have been fine. Uh, I think this is also just fine. This is probably maybe even best. Um, and I say, you know what, I'm just going to play here and then play over here on the next move, now that I have backup. But uh, white makes the space, and I should have no fear and just continue with my plan and just play here. <laughs> and this is actually really difficult for white to deal with. Um, you know, this, this shape is not quite completed, and even if black does complete the shape, uh, I can always just sort of bail and just, again, ruin white's, uh, white space. Alternatively, I could consider fighting, um, a little, but this, this is probably, in this case, this is a minus, because I would have to play something like this, and it's not quite as clear. This would be maybe giving white a, a chance where I could just scoop the base and profit from it. So I totally fail to invade right now. And my, uh, I mean, this is a big move, right, developing off of this corner. But it's bad direction in the sense that there's a weak group and this is priority over everything else on the board right now. It doesn't matter. This is natural, good development. Uh, white responds with a little bit of a surprise. I was not expecting this pincer here. Because it feels very hard for white to develop down here. So even though white builds this wall, what's the next play? I mean, white really needs another move. So white has to keep playing. And again, this is another perfect opportunity. Because white picked this go Joseki that's really pretty much gote, I should absolutely come back and play here. And so this Joseki choice is very much a mistake at least according to Mingju, where just play this, black plays here, white plays here, all right, we're back to a game. But I completely fail, face plant fail, to attack effectively, and instead play this corner. And this corner is just stupid. This corner is just nothing. Like, it's points. There's nothing significant going on here. Black already has two groups that are jutting into the corner. Um, you know, white can develop it, but has to work very hard at developing this area. So, not not an important move. So, this is, what, chance number three, effectively, to play over here? <laughs> I missed three opportunities to punish the weak group. I don't deserve to be a go player anymore. Kind of thing. Uh, and then... So, I should play this one, even though the shape looks dumb. I don't even know what shape to make here. Like, whatever shape I make, maybe just Tanuki. Probably here and just Tanuki. Uh, <laughs> probably there. We'll call that chance number four, even though I didn't play that variation. The reason why I didn't play this Joseki in game is because um, sort of the same problem of, of when I attached to white. White didn't really know um, how to solidify this, right? Should you play this? Should you play this? But this shape is terrible because there's actually defects in here, like this move later on. So, and if you just play this kind of shape, that's probably the best. But again, there's still defects, right? It's not solid. Like this corner, this corner group, is, is really nice because it can't be killed and it's solid. But it's not so nice because you can't, it's so hard to build anything off of it, right? No matter what you do, you know, white can continue to push you down from this way if white wants to build this, or squeeze you in this way if white wants to build this. So it's really has very, very limited influence in the rest of the, of the game as far as building anything. So anyway, I pick uh, Avalanche. In this case, I'm happy to play the small Avalanche because, again, I have the ladder now. And so the same, for the same reasons why he picked the avalanche here, I picked the same avalanche here. And for the exact same reasons that I just played the simple variation, he plays a simple variation too. 
So this is hilarious, right? Two games in my US Go Congress, the Keith Arnold game, which I think was uh, two videos ago, video number two, and this game, both saw uh, Symmetrical Joseki played in adjacent corners, although this one was a rotation and the Keith Arnold game was a reflection of the Joseki. Uh, this is amazing, like, and it should never happen. This is stupid, right? If, if this happens, someone has done something wrong, for sure. Um, so here we are, right? I have a small avalanche and he has it. And now at this point, I should do the same thing that he does and tanuki this and play here, right? This is opportunity number five to attack this. And again, this is a much more severe attack on me, or sorry, on him than he would have on me. Like if he were to attack me, I would care about this a lot less. It's very, even though, yeah, I could just let this die. He can't really develop it anymore because I already have this stone here and this stone here, right? It's very difficult for, he has to work very hard to develop. Whereas if I kill, uh, if I attack this stone, well, that's, we're talking about an entire side of the board now coming under threat. So I need to recognize that me attacking him is way more valuable than him attacking me, right? It's very difficult for him to profit from this. And so because, of, even though I don't realize that, I just defend. <sighs> so sad. But well, that gives him time to push this low. And I should just respond again and just be happy and take my points and keep it a game. Uh, although I would say I, White feels is starting to feel pretty comfortable now because he got away with murder here. But instead of doing this, I go after this first. And I think, I think this is still appropriate. I think either one. I think this is fine too. I think Mingju said that this one is fine now as well because of the circumstances, but uh, this is a bad move. So if I'm going to play another move here locally, it needs to be the jump. It needs to be a little bit faster um, just to make sure that I'm sort of out and separated these two groups. So this move is very, very heavy. And then this move is very, very heavy. And... I continue here. Oh, this move is very bad. I just need to make the shape move and make sure I have eye space. And so, I don't know, maybe I'm just on tilt again from never playing that A invasion like after five opportunities of missing it. But I'm working really hard to try to attack the stick and use this wall, right? Run the stick into the wall and try to attack it. Unfortunately, I don't realize how incredibly strong the stick is. Because <laughs> especially after this move, uh, Black has very little issue making uh, space. Um, now this peep, um, I thought he would just connect in game. When he played here, I kind of freaked out a little bit. And then uh, Mingju also thinks he should connect in game. And then I have another terrible fail here when I don't sort of punish this overplay. So in this case, I should just pull back. Yes. And now, like he still has to run out. And at whatever point we, we decide that we're sort of done running, which is very difficult for him to, to determine, <laughs> because again, the more he runs, the more he's endangering these three stones, and the safer my group is becoming. Uh, like, he, he can't just play simple moves, like he has to find a way to counterattack somehow, but I don't know what that is. Maybe it's this way, it's probably this way. This is probably the best way, but it's not entirely clear that this will end well for him because of all these cuts. Uh, so, I don't know. Again, he just played this response, which completely surprised me. And, whoops, nope. I just decided to come out again. But the problem is after this move, this group is really strong now, and my wall is very useless. Part of the reason why it's so strong is because there's still this cut here and this descend for white to make more eye space. Uh, so now the idea, <clears throat> for me at least, that I had, and I don't think it's a great idea, but I did it anyway, is to, I have to counterattack these three stones. And right now, I can't do it that effectively because, again, they're ladders. So I break a ladder. And if he responds, I can sort of quasi-theoretically play this, right? But uh, he might also play this and just start another vicious fight. 
so after I played this ladder breaker, I got kind of chicken. And part of the reason I, I just say I got chicken is because white still has this move. Um, because I put the black stone there instead of there, uh, this is pretty killer for white to um, get some sort of shape and or capture a stone. So I'm like, okay, we'll play another ladder breaker since <laughs> after further consideration, I don't like how this one looks. And so now I effectively will have both of these ladders broken. The problem is he doesn't respond and instead just starts to make a base for himself. And I play here, and this might be a little bit soft. I think I should play here and just let him try these sorts of things. Maybe? I don't know. It's really scary. Really scary. But if this, you know, were uh, to be how it goes, yeah, it's actually really scary because I get broken shape over here. Eee. Eee. Mm. Maybe there. I don't know. Black can build a pretty big middle, but I'm not sure if it's worth endangering the entire corner. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we just connect. Yeah, that feels weak. Feels weak. Yeah, this 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 move I was unprepared for. Oh, maybe there. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, for a reason, I don't think this moves on my radar. This felt very submissive, but maybe it's good here. Uh, I think in this case, I can actually take and not worry about this, right? Let's see. Yeah, it's for it's. He was still have forcing moves later. So even if I play this and he gets this, eh, that's kind of submissive. All right. So that's why I don't like this one. Maybe this is the best move, and it's just... <laughs> I don't know. The problem is, there's still an attachment here later that has a lot of oddity. Uh, but now he plays this move, and he cuts through, he gets all this. And I should play this move right away. Um, just to keep pressure on, and keep my stone strong with a lot of liberties. I get it in later, but not a big deal. Alright, now here, I'm, I'm now planning to start attacking thinking I can attack this. The problem is, is I kind of misread it, and I can't really attack, it's too hard. <laughs> it's just too hard to attack this thing now. And if I can't attack it effectively, then this is a really terrible exchange. Because now all of a sudden, instead of this left-hand side being up for grabs for nobody, now he actually has momentum and, a, and is just strong enough to actually take it for himself. Because I think I'm going to get to play this, but this move totally doesn't work. Like, it doesn't work a million different ways. Like, even if you just play something like this, and I capture a stone, ta-da! He's alive. Well, actually, technically it's Ko, but um, there's still problems over here. In-game, he even takes uh, a more aggressive approach, though. And peeps, this is good technique, and then cap. This is very good order. Uh, so, I cut on through. And I think I have a chance in here. Whoops, that's not the game, is it? This is the game. Uh, do I have a chance? No, because I need. I still need to come back and capture these two. And so White's even more alive with with actually a number of points. Like it's it's like non-trivial number of points now. And so Black really got nothing. And so finally, I mean, basically, black got the same number of non-trivial points here as did white. Uh, so it's a complete wash, but black was the one who needed to profit from this invasion somehow, or this attack. Because uh, he tried so hard to do it. Uh, white finally gets to come back here and respond to this ladder breaker. Uh, and I respond again, I probably shouldn't, I, sh I probably need to... Well, except that now there's really nothing here for me to cut. So plays this. This is good, Aji. I respond this way, and this is poor. I should probably just clamp. Because um, even though white can get these two stones here, that's it. There's nothing else, and black has a really solid outside. If you just take the solid outside first. Oops. 
Um, white ends up with slightly better shape here. And Sente. Or, well, not Sente, but like Endgame, right? That's a pretty huge Endgame. So make that exchange, and then I have to come back and play this Gote move. And what plays here, and basically the game is over at this point. Um, yes, black has some territory here. Like, you can cancel this out and this out. Um, white's territory here is bigger than black's territory here. White's territory here is about the same, if not a little bigger, than black's territory here. And, uh, you know, white's territory here is about the same as black's territory here. And then white gets Comey. So... There's just no way, like, like, there's no way for black to make up the last seven points. I do try to build, I try to build something in the middle. Actually, white almost makes a mistake. I, I almost find a way. Um, and so after here, I play this move. Now this move actually is a lot more powerful if I can get white to make like this exchange first. And I didn't realize this until it was a few moves further down the line. And you'll see, you'll see, that's why the sequence looks weird. But I play this first, and play this way, and I can't quite connect here because of this throw-in. And so black would live in the corner, but these two stones would die and white would win the game quite handily, and I would get nothing. But if we go all the way back to here, nope, here, here, nope, here, we go back to here, if black makes this exchange and if white gets tricked, now we play out the same kind of scenario. Uh, we can't, so the problem with doing this is of course black will just give that up, so we can't take this Atari unfortunately. Oops, but we do just link up, that's still good. Uh, now, if black, if white tries to cut, right, does all this throwing garbage, Right, there's no cut here, because it's protected from this stone. And so now these, I don't know, six stones, seven stones, need another move. Now we could even take the Atari here, again, that threatens to cut. And we could harass this thing. And I think that would be Seki later if white doesn't respond again. Um, but, wait, didn't white need to respond over here? Did we give white a response? Where's white's response? Do, do, do. Oh, white. Yeah, white should probably just respond there and give that stone up. Um, if white connects, that's game over, right? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> white can't connect there. So connect there. Then play here. Maybe white plays this. But already, this is a pretty huge difference. Um, because now this got very small. Uh, black profit a little bit is solid here. I don't know. And maybe can make a few more points here. Anyway, let's go back to the game. So I play this. That's actually not the real opportunity I was talking about, though. This was just a better variation, a more efficient variation. Whoops, that's not the game. What am I doing? This is the game. So I make all these exchanges and then threaten this, and of course, white just takes the two stones. Because at this point, my opponent's strong enough to see what's going on, <laughs> and doesn't have any time to respond. All right, so the good news is we get to play in here. Now white plays that, we get to jump out. Uh, it's just, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, this exchange happened earlier on in the game, I just missed it in the game record. Uh, until now. And so after this move, uh, white tries to push in here, and gets a little greedy. Because uh, white can't really capture it. Like, like, it looks like white's trying to profit here, but if the second white does that, there is super bad news for white. Because I have this combination. And he can try things like this. But I would get to eat these three stones and take over that side of the board again. And so during the game, he's hovering with his hand, right? He's about to play a move right on this point. <laughs> and he's looking at it, he's looking at it, and I'm not moving, I'm just staying there, because I'm, I'm, I'm playing this, right? This is the thing I'm, I'm aiming at when I play this move. 
And he takes his hand back and he puts it, he actually moves it back there for a second and he puts it away. And then he finally just ends up playing that move. <laughs> and so, yeah, I try to make a few more points in the middle. Um, but he gets all this end game. This is act. I make a few little mistakes in here. Try to just play good end game. But at this point, I didn't actually, I, I mean, I, um, I resigned pretty early because, yeah, I think I resigned here. Um, because I can't find a way to make up enough points. And actually, I want to see if the score estimator agrees. Oh, there it is over there. Because I had my, I couldn't make up Comey. Like I said, no matter what I did, like there's not seven points in the game for black. Wow, that says 47 for white. That's not what I counted. Here, let's add a few more moves. Uh, okay, that should not screw up now. Yeah, so white three and a half in this version. But it's being very generous to black in here. Like, really generous. It's giving, being a little generous to white too, but I think it's being extra generous to black. So, yeah. I mean, everything, everything of white's is strong. And... You know, there's just no no end game. So this was a pretty a pretty sad loss. It's like one of those games where you just go up against a you know the the Sisyphus rock, and you just keep rolling it uphill, and you just can't get any traction. Um, but of course, it's completely self inflicted, primarily because I never play this move. And again, I could play it now. I could play it. <laughs> there are five good opportunities to play this one move. All right, here's number two. Actually, it's really three, right? Because, yeah, that was three because there was, th after th instead of this move, that could have been number two. Oh, no, that was number one, right? No, number one is immediately. Number two is then. Number three is now. Number four is right now. Uh, there were five. Oh, no, no, instead of, yeah, yeah I could I could have made it a fifth opportunity right here. But at least in the literal moves of the game, as replacing one for one moves, yeah, there were four perfect opportunities to play this one move. So what do you do with that? I mean, you just feel bad about yourself for a long time after the game. <laughs> it's just really sad. Ah, uh, four opportunities. That should be the nickname of this game, the four opportunity game to attack something. I don't know, is this one of those weird games where... I don't know if you just, just didn't muster up enough bravery. It was just so flabbergasted by the <laughs> symmetrical Joseki. No idea. But, you know, again, playing Tournament Go, especially Tournament Go, makes me realize that Go is not just a game of skill and intelligence and intellect. It's also a game of psychology. And so often, it's your own psychology that will win or lose you the games. And yeah, I mean, I think that's, especially in these games that I'm showing you guys in the series, that's really, really self-evident. Like, uh, you know, in some of these games, you know, you just, you're, you just become blind to something for whatever reason, you know, it, you know, because you get stuck in a certain mindset and you can't bring your, your mind back to that more sense of openness or your opponent does something that you don't think your opponent can do and you just play moves that seem like they should obviously punish, and in the end, you don't actually take the time to read anything out. So many little things like that can go wrong for you, or me, when you're playing a game of Go. They're just purely just like yourself versus yourself. And so that is one thing, you know, that the US Open, the US Go Congress reminds me every year that Go, you know, really is a game against yourself. You know, it's like the ultimate mirror match, even when you're playing with another person. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's uplifting. Maybe that's depressing. Are y'all sad now? All right, well, sorry.